Welcome. In this video, I'm going to give you a Luminar Neo review. I'll give you my first impressions of the brand new product that was released today by Skylum. Hi, I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and I teach beginner and intermediate photographers like you how to improve your photography right from the capturing camera all the way through to the editing process. So let me open up Luminar Neo and we'll get started. Okay, here we are inside of Luminar Neo. First thing you'll notice is up on the top left corner, of course, is the Luminar Neo logo, so you know that's what we're using. If you're coming over from Luminar AI, you'll recognize a lot of these tools. The panels on the right hand side look very similar to what you're already using. If you're coming over from Luminar 4 or a previous version of Luminar, it looks a little bit different, so stick with me. I'm going to show you what's new first. One of the things that a lot of people were excited about when Luminar Neo was announced is some of the additional AI tools. Two of those are inside the Erase tool. You can see there's now Remove Dust Spots and Remove Power Lines. I've talked about these in a previous video where I gave a sneak peek because I had an early beta version of the program. So you can see that it's working on removing these spots on this particular image where I had a lot of dust. Overall, it's done a really good job on an image that had a lot of dust because I had a really dirty sensor from my old Canon. It looks like it missed a little bit down here and I'm going to forgive it and just do a quick erase. Let's try the remove power lines on this image. I attempted this on a previous version or a previous build which was a really early beta version. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. It's done a pretty good job and it did a better job than it did in previous versions. One thing I noticed here is that it's taken out part of the inner workings of the umbrella, but that's easy to fix too. So you can just brush over it and then click restore. Okay, so it thought that that was a power line. You can also see that it missed a little bit right here, so you can brush over that and click erase. So it did a really great job on an image that was quite complicated including having some lines in between here. Okay, I've noticed another spot here on her shirt that it looks like it made a mistake, so I'm just going to restore that as well. Now if I zoom in tighter, I could probably do a good job of removing this other line in here, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. Something else that is back, if you use Luminar 4 currently and you missed it in Luminar AI, is layers. So over here on the left, I just click the plus sign. There's a few that have come with Luminar Neo already preloaded as free ones, and I've just loaded a few of my own to play around with. This is one for my Cubit texture pack. A link to that pack is in the description below the video if you're interested in purchasing the set. So once you've added a layer, it puts on the crop handles so you can resize it if you wish. You'll notice that it fit it to the image automatically and then you could change the blend modes and of course the opacity and so on. I think this one, yes, overlay is a good choice here. Now the neat thing about applying this is this image has a lot of blue in it. So if I want to get rid of some of that, I can actually go down here and desaturate and you'll notice that because I am on this layer, which is the texture layer, it's only applying there. Right? So see how saturate is changing only the texture. If I want to do something else, any of the tools apply here on this layer. So if you're adding a person, you can do some face retouching. In this case, I'm just going to, oops, wrong tool. I'm just going to add a little sepia LUT and make that overlay a little more brown. So instead of a blue texture, now I have one that is a little more on the brown tone and goes with this image. Like any layer that you would expect, it also does have ability to mask and to erase parts of the layer or hide them using this masking tool. So I'm just gonna do that real quick here so I have a bit more of the flower. like so. Now, let's say I want to go back and edit the flower again, because you'll notice that all of these things that I applied here, 
Okay, if I crunch up the details, my texture gets crunchier, but the image underneath doesn't, right? If I want to edit the original image, I have to go back to that layer. Then when I apply it, it's applying to that bottom layer. So it's nice to have layers back and it will give us the ability of applying textures and overlays, but also combining two or more images. Another new feature is Luminar Share, which allows you to export your image directly to your phone or mobile device. You just choose export and connect, scan this on your phone and install the app and then you can start sending images directly from Luminar Neo on your computer or your desktop to your mobile device. The last new tool that's been added to Luminar Neo is Relight AI. Again, I demonstrated this in a previous video, but I want to show you what I can do with this image here. I've already done some basic editing using the tools um, in here, and I'll show you the history in a moment because that's also something that's changed a little bit. And now I'm going to brighten him using the Brighten Near slider and darken the background. I'm going to go to an extreme just so I can see where it's going. Okay, you can see that that indeed is lighting him. Then I can change the depth slider to decide how far back I want to darken versus lighten. So I'm going to make sure that he stands out, darken that background, and then bring this back to something that looks more realistic. Now I can also warm him up using the warm slider near and cool off the background because I find that it's a little bit yellow. So let's make him warmer and the background cooler. See what that's doing? It's really helping him jump out from the background. Now I could also use the Portrait Bokeh AI tool to do this, but then I would be blurring the background at the same time. So there's definitely application for this tool and it works on images besides portraits as well. Let's take a quick look. This is a really dramatic image of the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. So let's light it up, let's darken that sky, and then let's just see how far I wanna go. You'll notice that when I increase the depth, it's affecting the edge of the arch. So I can play with that and also the dehalo slider to make sure that I'm getting the right mix on the edge here. Let's just zoom in a little bit. There you go. So this one works really well on images that are not portraits, whereas the Portrait Bokeh AI works only on portraits. And then of course you can also use the other AI tools that were in Luminar AI. They've also come forward into Neo. So Enhance AI, so Accent, and also Sky Enhancer in this case will do a really great job. Then I'm just gonna go in to give it a little bit of punch in develop, give it a little more blacks back, and warm it up just a tiny bit. So there you can see the relight slider works a really good job and does the magic on a very backlit subject. In this next section, I wanna take a look at how Luminar Neo is different than previous iterations, for example, Luminar AI. I already mentioned the interface. If we look at the catalog window, it looks pretty similar. We've got folders and albums, that's all the same. You can see your image information. You can change the size of the thumbnails and so on. You'll notice that templates is missing from the top here. And now we go straight into edit this looks fairly similar again with a few differences. You'll notice that develop now says develop raw. So I'm working on a raw file and Luminar Neo recognizes that. So we can work with profiles if you have your camera profiles installed and I could do some editing. So I'm just going to do some quick adjustments on this one. And one thing to note is the optics, which used to be in the pro panel, are now in the raw develop section, okay? And this is the only place and the only time you'll be able to find this. So I've got some chromatic aberration happening here and also some defringe or some fringing. So I'm gonna just check that off and see, uh, I think actually the defringe worked better. So I'm gonna use that. 
We can do lens corrections for distortion. Again, these are the this is the only place where you will find these controls. Now, what happens when I close this tool, you'll see something new. Now it says develop, but it doesn't say raw, okay? So I've applied that edit already, and you can see when I go over to edit, that is now the history panel. So edit has replaced history, and you can see the tool that I've used and already applied, which is develop raw. If I go back, and let's say I'm going to do accent AI, and a sky enhancer. Now you'll see that edits has two here, a number is given, and you can see that now enhance AI is on top of develop. Let me undo all of this and show you what happens if you don't do develop first. So go back to tools. I'm gonna do enhance AI first. I'm gonna do them in the opposite order okay, and apply it. Now you'll see that I don't have the option of raw develop and the optics does not have the chromatic aberration and the lens corrections that I had before. Okay, so you always want to make sure that you apply develop raw first. Now you notice what happened here is you can see two versions of develop. So it recognized that again I had a raw file and it added raw develop underneath enhance AI even though I didn't apply it. So I can go ahead and do these corrections here, and there's my optics that I'm missing out on. So then we don't need this other develop, just dump it. Okay, so if you forget to add your develop processing first on your raw files, Luminar pops it in there for you under the edits and you can go back and make some changes. Let's take a look at how this plays out when we've got a few more edits involved. I've done quite a bit to this image and changed it quite a lot from the original. This is what it looked like, and that's where I'm at now. So you can see these are all the steps that I took. The one at the bottom, raw develop, same thing. Enhance AI, vignette, landscape, and so on. So I can go back to any of these steps and adjust them. If I want more golden hour, I can do that. You'll notice that when I went down several steps, it turned off everything above. So that's one drawback or one con that I would say in terms of this editing workflow and this history, the method of this history. When I go back to the top, then everything applies. So it's a little bit tricky to go down and adjust something you've done before without seeing the edits that are on top. So I hope this history is a work in progress because it's not really um, optimized for doing edits when you go back to make some changes you can't see what's on top so I'm hoping that this is a tool that they will be continuing to work on I mentioned that templates are now missing from this top workflow and they're over here on this side panel with tools edits and they're called presets again so if you owned Luminar 4, they were called presets. Luminar AI was templates. Now we're back to presets again. The disadvantage um, of presets here is you can apply anything you want, of course. But let me just undo this. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of that. Revert to the original. I'm going to apply some other tools first. I'm going to do some smart contrast. And I'm just going to warm it up a little bit and then give it a little edge vignette. Okay. So the reason I'm doing this is you'll see what happens when I go back here and choose one of these presets. It gives you a notice that this is going to overwrite everything that you've just done. So if I apply it, now the other edits that I did are gone and it's just the preset. Keep that in mind that if you're going to use a preset, you want to apply it first. The other thing that's changed is you can't actually see what's inside this preset or the various tools that have been applied to get this look. You can still scale it down in the amount slider, but you can't see, for example, that it's applied uh, mystical, maybe um, a mood or something. Okay, So you can apply your preset, but just make sure that you do it first before you do any other editing. I'd like to ask you a quick question. 
Did you pre-order Luminar Neo? And if so, what questions do you have? I'm going to be compiling a list of frequently asked questions and doing a video to try and answer as many of them as possible. So if you have any questions about Luminar Neo, please put them in the comment area below and I'll add them to my list. Okay, let's take a look at what's missing. There's a few things that Skylum has said I have not been included in this uh, release, but will be coming soon. Okay. We are currently missing a histogram that's not available here anymore. Okay. But if you want to see the histogram, you can always see it in the develop module under the curves panel. Likewise, clipping warnings have been disabled. So you can't hit the keyboard shortcut J on get your clipping warnings showing up. That's a highly requested feature among the Skyland partners. So hopefully that will be added back in soon. You'll also notice that the before and after button is at the bottom now, and the slider that used to be there is missing as well. So I'm not sure if they're going to put that back. I always tend to use the keyboard shortcut myself anyways, and that's just backslash. Something else that is noticeably absent is view film strip. You'll see that it's grayed out. So I'm hoping that that's coming back soon. Um, that hasn't been specifically discussed among the partners, but it's here in the menu. So I'm going to take a leap and say, I'm going to assume that that's coming back. There are several other tools that are noticeably absent as well. We are missing in the pro section at the bottom here, the dodge and burn tool and the cloning and healing tool. We've been told that those will be added back in. Anything that was in Luminar AI that currently is not in Neo, such as those tools, we've been told that they will be added in one of the next updates. When those are coming, we haven't been told yet. So unfortunately, I don't have a date for you on that. When we dig into the individual tools and masking, you can still mask any of the tools, but right now we're only limited to painting in or out. So the radial and the graduated masks will be coming back as will copy and paste, and I'm told some other things available as well. As to what those are, your guess is as good as mine. Likewise, you're not able to copy and paste adjustments or sync adjustments across multiple images currently. One thing that I do find a little bit cumbersome is there's no undo. So if I choose to erase something, let's just say I want to erase that, and then I decide, no, I don't want to do that. I want it back. There is no undo, okay? Doesn't exist. So the only way to get that back is to delete the whole tool, or in this case, I could just paint it back and click restore. But there isn't an easy way to just go back one step, even within that tool while you still have it active. So for me, that was that's gonna fall into the con category. The ability to save your own presets or to edit them, to convert your old templates that you had from Luminar AI, and to convert a catalog from a previous version of Luminar are things that we're all hoping for. We've discussed with Skylam and there are things that partners have requested. So whether or not those are coming soon, again, I don't have an answer on that for you, unfortunately. We are told that the background replacement and the mask AI tools are still being worked on. Those are a couple of features that were promised and they will be out in a future release. Another thing that I noticed is, is missing or slightly different is the crop tool. Now it's here at the top and it stays there. It doesn't go into edit. So you can go and crop at any time. It does have the button to adjust for tilts and, and correct the horizon alignment but it doesn't have the perspective correction for buildings and there's nothing to do it manually. So I'm hoping that feature is going to be added back in as well. So what do I think of Luminar Neo? Well, I think there are some pros and some cons with the current version that's been released today. The cons are it's a bit slower than I expected. Actually, they promised a big speed upgrade and I did notice there was quite a bit of lag time moving from one image to the next and applying edits. There is also a lot of stuff still missing, tools that didn't come over from Luminar AI and new tools that they're still developing. The pros are that the new features 
work pretty well and I'm confident that where they're going to take it is to make them even better and this is just the beginning for these tools such as Relight and Layers. Another pro is that the team is very active in communicating with partners like myself. We've had meetings and they're really interested in our feedback and what we present to them as as feature requests or bug reports, they take to heart and really go to work on those things. So that's really encouraging. I don't know about you, but I've never had a meeting with Adobe executives. So the question is, will I be using Luminar Neo? Yes, I will be, and I've already incorporated it into my workflow as a plugin for Lightroom and Photoshop. Do I recommend it? I'm going to say yes, and if you've already bought the pre-ordered version, you should have a copy in your hands currently. So I recommend give it a chance. Keep in mind that it, it does have a 30 day money back guarantee. So even if you buy it today and you try it out for 30 days and you decide that it's not for you, you could always ask for your money back. But I do encourage you to have some patience and wait for the update. I know we've all been waiting a really long time for this one. It's been almost five months, but this is a brand new program and it, I, I personally don't know how to develop a piece of software. So I'm going to say, let's leave it in the developer's hands, tell them what we want the program to do, and they are listening. If you want to learn a bit more, watch this video in the upper right corner now. If you're ready to get going with Luminar Neo, check out my Luminar Neo, the complete course available for order now. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.